what would you all like to do? Have we uh, had a short rest? After you guys are given your gifts, yeah, you guys have, well, can take your short rest. And I would say now it's about early afternoon, just after midday. I feel great now. Appreciate you guys getting me out of that beast. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, <laughs> nasty. That was pretty scary. I'm not going to. I mean, I've been in the gullets of other things, but nothing quite as harrowing as that enormous reptilian creature. Seeing the little guys jumping around, I'm going to look at Bella and I guess we did it. Maybe. Yeah, it'll it'll heal with time, but we've removed the infecting, uh, corrupting spirit that was at its core. And as you're saying that, you can see already the that had been afflicting the trees, roots and bark and branches already starting to slough off and new growth starting to appear. Nice. You figure in a, in a pretty short amount of time. This tree will be as good as new. Now, if you're if you're ready, I believe the tree said that we would be led where we need to go. So, do you, do you think you can handle the journey? Oh, I think I'm good now. My jaw's a little sore, so I might not be very talkative. That's okay. Of course, yeah. Uh, I I'm still just impressed by the fact that you could even move around inside the stomach there and attack. Uh, we, the funny thing was is we were outside and it was it was hard to see, but uh, you could see it it like moving every single time you hit it from the inside. It was, it was pretty wild. It uh, I mean. It was a little tight, but that's how damn big that thing was. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was a spirit. Like, like we weren't technically literally in the center of that tree. So that whole the kind of a dimension we went into. So I'm not even sure what have, would have happened to you physically if we couldn't get you out of there. Because it wasn't a real snake. Well, I guess the good news is you got me out, so... Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. Uh, Fenthwick, Core, you ready to go? Uh, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, Core will stop doing the car lot, blow up doll dance with the four spirits, and follow the group. Nice. And I uh, will uh, kind of turn, do, uh, do a little nod in my head, and, and pat the side of this giant tree that is already beginning to heal, and and kind of uh, walk towards the group of the. Uh, the four spirits and be like, all right, let's, let's get a move on. As you pat the tree, you feel kind of a breeze both through the branches and all of them blow in the wind for a moment and shake and you feel the, the reverberation in the tree. And f one golden leaf floats down and falls into your hand. Uh, is it like a pristine leaf that's alive or is it? does it feel like it's something else? It Yeah, it feels like a leaf. All right, I've got I've got like scrolls and like a book that I'm I'm writing everything down in and, and making maps of, so I'll I'll put it safely in uh, in like a little area so it doesn't get all crinkled and broken. All right, uh, I kind of lean over to Fenthwick and I'm like, I don't know if this is magical or not, but it's it's nice, it's golden. No, well, can check it later. Okay, all right, and uh, then I'll nod and we'll start walking with the forest spirits. Thank you guys gather around, and as they see you all getting ready, a large group kind of gathers around you, and then starts heading into the forest, when they feel that you're ready. Yeah. Yeah, let's follow. They know the way. They let us here. And in the same way, they kind of are leapfrogging themselves. As it's a large group, they're running forwards, going into the branches and into the rocks, out of, out of the trees, jumping from branch to branch, and then the last of the group always waits you you can tell that they are made from the essence of this place so i need marching order please uh it'll be me and uh hal up front and then i assume if we're going two by two then core and fenthwick behind us sounds good sounds so you guys start heading through the forest one hour two hours and belladin this time you don't get the sense of repeating areas anymore nice Nice. Eventually, though, you do get to a part of the forest that gets denser and denser as you're getting through it. So much so that you almost have to go single file. And this forest lyrics continue to lead you. And 
you feel that without their guidance, this could have been a pretty, pretty daunting task to make your way through these maze of trees. And as you make your way through, you, Beladin, with your passive perception, you start to see eyes looking at you all from the tr- coming from the trees itself, peering out of the bark mm. and the trunks. Using my uh, experience from my walkabout and my survival skills, would I be able to discern what type of creatures might be looking at us? Uh, I'm not even going to make you roll for it, you would know. As these druids tend to use these creatures to protect their groves as well. These are wood woods. Wood woods? Oh, interesting. And they, you see some of them start to gather and take a step forward, but as they see the forest spirits with you, you see them kind of shrink back into the trees. And you guys get a feeling that with with your escorts, this is an encounter that's been avoided. Oh, very cool. Hal, you're probably feeling a little more claustrophobic than the rest. Belladin, you're okay. But, like I said, you almost have to walk single file, climbing around these roots and tr- branches. Um, and you guys can go ahead and move your tokens through the map if you'd like. But yeah, And Belladin, you know that Woodwodes have the ability to teleport through trees that they can see. Amazing. So this could have been a very harrowing encounter that you all avoided by helping out these forest spirits. But eventually you guys make your way through this dense part of the forest once again and continue on. Yes. Is it like this where you're from? I know you said you're mainly from like areas where there's a lot of pools and things like that. Is the forest like this where you're from? For, for the back, lack of a better word for it, the tribe I come from, we have a, a sacred duty to protect the land from the place where we live. The, the swamps are uh, acidic and poisonous and there's something I guess magically inherently wrong with them. And we make our home there not to protect it, but to protect the outside world from it. We strengthen the borders of this of the swamps to make sure that it doesn't spread and to stop creatures from from falling prey to its its poison. I, w- I would have to say that this this vibrant, healthy nature that surrounds us now is the opposite of where I'm from. And uh, well, I think that's good. I think I'm not used to this forest stuff. I mean, there's very little, as you can imagine, very little trees on the tundra. Right. Right. Yeah, there, this this has to be an extremely healthy part of the world for the trees to grow together this close. And I like reach out a palm and touch one tree and then put the the staff in a crook of my elbow and touch the other tree with my other palm to show how close they are together, which probably isn't helping <laughs> your claustrophobia. And uh, you know, like this, this is uh, this is impressive. But um, with our friends here, I motion toward the uh, tree spirits that are crowding around core and I imagine mimicking his uh, 7-Eleven dance. Yeah, there's always, a, there's always a group of about five or six just kind of, whenever you guys stop, they just kind of gather around core and then just wait. They're not going to steer us wrong and they even pushed off those woodwards uh, earlier, woodwards earlier. So we'll get through this and we're well on our way. I'm, I'm interested in seeing your home, though. Uh, we've traveled a long way. Hopefully we can get back to Doonshire and then head through the Chilwin Pass. We got our cold weather gear, I guess. It's going to be a little bit colder for you than it probably will be for me. But I guess we've been down in this very hot area for quite a while now. Mm-hmm. Well, be nice for a change of pace. Seeing as how you're farther north even than Doonshire... No sense of frost or extreme cold here. It's kind of like a, maybe like a crisp spring day. That's about it. Yeah, the, the magic of this place. The gold leaves. The towering, towering you know, pillars of, of life around us. It's nice. It's a reprieve. But I imagine as soon as we leave this maze of a forest, it's going to be very, very cold. 
So as soon as we start feeling the temperature change, I'll look back at Kor and, and uh, Fenthwick. And I look at Kor and realize he probably doesn't have winter clothes. Uh, maybe, maybe if we get attacked by some boars or dire wolves or something, we can fashion something for Kor. I'd look at Hal. You know how to do that, I imagine, living on the Tundra. Yep, I can do that. Yeah, in fact, the magic from where I'm from keeps it pretty cold. And I'll kind of give a sidelong glance over to Fenthwick. Wry smile. Yeah, it's uh, keeps the magic up there keeps it pretty cold. After you, brother. <laughs> and I'll uh, just staff in hand and and start leading the the four spirits that I imagine you said have stopped. You know, like five to ten feet away from us and just look at us with their their strange masks slash faces and and continue walking forward in the front how behind and i don't know what the order of finthwick and core are so you guys continue on the forest for another few hours it's getting close to sunset now i'd like everyone to give me a perception check please that's an explosion uh natural 20 fentwick and how as you guys are making your way through the forest the first thing you sense out of the corner of your eye is movement and you see a swath of fur passing by the trees in the distance and eventually you make out large antlers as what appears to be a herd of giant elk are passing through the forest tap Belladin on the shoulder kind of stop him and point look with my eyes we have elk on the tundra Mm, probably not quite that big uh, this kind of seems fortuitous. Should we, should we get one and maybe it'll feed us all for dinner, and then we can fashion some winter clothes for Core. The uh, scout before we went into the Emerald Conclave on the Emerald Pine Forest, remember he was talking about how these elk were being corrupted in the area. I'm not sure if that same thing's happening here with these, with. My perception, are, are there anything that looks out of place from a normal elk other than them being gigantic? Not really. These are bigger than even some of the giant elk that you've seen before in the tundra, Hal. Most of them kind of have like a light brown fur. But with your nat- with your natural 20, you do get a glimpse of deep ruby bread for a flash. But not blue. Okay. All of you would notice around you, the forest spirits seem very excited. Uh, what are they excited about, Kor? Uh, Kor can't talk to them. Kor dance with them. For the first time that you guys have stopped, the group that usually is around Kor is paying no attention to him. Oh. <laughs> what are these little guys doing? Are they, like, hiding behind Kor? Uh, give me an insight check. All right. They're not hiding. I, I would be trying to figure it out, too, I imagine. I don't know if... Uh, dang. I rolled a three, by the way. Oh, the universe balances it out. And, Belladin, what's your passive insight? How you're trying to figure out what's going on with these little guys, but you can't make heads or tails of it. Belladin, they, they seem excited and almost in awe. Okay. And I'll tap Hal on the shoulder and say, I imagine this might be a, a rare sight, even for them. There, there's a little bit of reverence in their, in their behavior, but they're definitely, they're definitely happy. Oh, I thought you meant like reverence, like, you know, we give reverence to large creatures on the tundra, you know, right before we go into battle. Just we know that they're going to be a worthy adversary. That's kind of what they look like to me. Yeah, I imagine life might be more sacred here, and maybe we don't. We don't attack this herd. Maybe we move on and we'll find something in the mountains before we, before it gets really bad. Okay. I mean, uh, I'll keep my eyes out if we need to worry about getting some food. I know you didn't take any, take any extra berries, so we should be able to find something between you and I, I imagine. Whenever we're stopping or, or taking a water break or whatever, because, you know, we're not constantly moving uh, at all times, uh, Belladin will be looking around for, for food and berries and roots and stuff like that to sustain us while we make our way through the forest easy enough to do and then the moment passes and the herd vanishes out of sight from in between the trees that you guys saw might be something we never see again it's, it's good that we saw it R- ridden, ridden them we use 
different kinds of mounts up north because horses aren't as... I mean, we have large horses, but they're not... Typically, the horses down here are, aren't very sturdy and probably wouldn't survive up there. So we've been known to, for those of us who don't run, equipment, our kills, our fines. I mean, not anything that big. But I wonder if we could have ridden them. It's oh, a nice thought. Uh, I mean, if we uh, if we want to ride something, I can, based on this this uh, charm that I got, I could summon us some war horses for an hour if we want to ride. But I don't imagine is it is it still like those very tight trees? Is it, are we still in that type of area? It's it's not super dense like it was, but it's still thick with bushes and this kind of soft moss that's kind of covering the ground, you'd imagine that horses wouldn't be any faster. You know, there's not a clear trail for them to go through. True, true. I imagine even without our uh, our little spirit friends, everyone would be benefiting from my uh, the difficult terrain aura or whatever it is that I have, which might be helping. I don't even know if that would work on the horses. Uh, so, yeah, maybe... Uh, I don't know. We'll find something. How? We should be out of this forest pretty soon. And then we're going to have to worry about the druids we're following. I thought we were going to the heart of the forest. I point back towards the heart tree. I believe that was the heart of the forest. I think we saved <laughs> the heart of this forest. Oh, not the heart. It was the... Uh, what did he say, Benthwick? The uh, sacred grove? That could be anywhere, huh? I mean, it could be all the way on the other side, I guess. I would assume so. Well, I imagine these little little beings know where it is. We should continue on. All right, let's keep moving. And you guys continue following the forest spirits. And they bring you to a small little glade with a pool of water. No, no, no. I'll just get settled and, and maybe do some more foraging. Make sure we have enough food to last us through uh, the rest of today. And, and food for the morning so that way we're not traveling hungry. And uh, probably re-up water breathing just because and uh yeah just settle in unless anybody wants to chat i will help belladin forage using my background but then uh, i want to ask belladin while we're foraging i want to learn more about what these charms are from core you you guys seem to speak speak the same language excuse me a little indigestion there cyclops's eye uh <laughs> did you no, eat never... did you eat the eye it was it's kind of ceremonial I didn't think it would be that terrible yeah that's probably why I survived being in that snake's uh, belly for so long I wouldn't be surprised if you got some type of short term acid immunity or resistance uh, from consuming the eye of a whatever it is you ate I think they called it a cyclops or a one eye I mean I speak I, I could speak the same language as they, them. I'm uh, pretty sure it was a Cyclops. They were speaking giant? Yeah. I speak giant. Oh, that's good to know. Um, well, as talking about languages, uh, Kor and I are speaking Sylvan. It's a, kind of a, an older form of uh, Elven, and it uh, has its uh, origins in the Feywild. I got this charm from Kor from the other day for defeating his foe that captured him and his party. But then I got this one here back when we were in Sugod. Uh, another monk, I guess, or person who fights with his hands like that. Um, I've never seen anybody hit so hard with their hands open. It's, I've usually got to have their, you know, hands clenched, or even better, a weapon. Right. Um, but they also gave me, I just want to know what the significance of it, other than we can get entry into it, the monastery. I mean, I'm not really sure what's there, but I'd like to know more. Well, um, I, do you want me to translate for you between you and he so he can explain it better? Or, or do you want me to? Yes. Okay. That's, All right. That, I guess that's what I was what I was asking without asking. Um, Happy to. And we'll finish gathering berries or food or whatever. Yeah. And we, uh, we come back just with a, a embarrassing horde of roots and berries and uh we even found some some egos and uh 
and we show up and I imagine Core is still doing are, are you hanging out with the Forest Spirits or are you are you hanging out with Fentwick? Oh no, I'm definitely teaching the Forest Spirits some monk kung fu right now, like it's going down. Oh amazing. That gives a new meaning to the one inch punch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean I think that's probably as far as their arms move. Uh so we'll we'll set the stuff down by Fentwick and I'll ask Fentwick uh, I don't know if we wanna have a, a fire or not, but you've got the you've got the dome tonight, right? Yeah, I can whip out a dome. Okay, cool. I mean, the forest is really nice, but I, I just like the added security. And then I start stomping the ground, making sure there's no sentient flowers under our feet. And uh, I'll stomp my way over to core. And uh, if there's like a log or a rock nearby, I'll motion for Hal to sit next to me. And while we're watching core uh, perform his various monk fighting ritual movements. And uh, I'll just call over to Kor and Sylvan. I'll say, hey, you don't need to stop what you're doing. But Hal uh, brought up the, the charm you gave him. And he actually had a, a charm from another monk uh, that does the same thing. He doesn't, he doesn't ex- uh, know exactly what, it, what it's for. I guess it gets entry into the monastery or something. Do you, do you know specifically what, what it does or what it's for? Yeah, Kor will... Uh mid spin kick stop and kind of bow to his his following and uh kind of shoot them away take a break come over they all start stomping around just like Beladin was that's i'm teaching survival skills here these these are given to individuals that are deemed worthy generally warriors but fighting isn't just what's needed yep so as as you're talking i'm just like kind of leaning over to Hal and translating into common as you're talking. So that way the, the conversation can kind of continue on. He, he, he may go to my people. Um, he has entry to the monastery, but not only that, um, presenting this would allow him to undergo our training if he so chose. Ooh. And I'll actually do that. I'll go, ooh. And then I'll translate that part. But what does this training entail? I mean, like what you're doing? Or is it, do you go through special training in the mountains and you push-ups on logs and balance yourself on the end of swords and learn to make smoke bombs and stuff? Yeah, before I translate that, I go, you know, it's kind of funny because in combat, how, like, out of combat, you're a very calm, kind, kind of nice guy. Um, In combat, you... uh, I don't know. You undergo a change, and your your ancestors show up in these these like ghostly forms to do battle with you. Like it's pretty intense. And then I'll I'll motion towards Core, whereas Core Core is just kind of like calm and at peace. And I don't know. It kind of feels like I don't I don't know how that would mix. And after I do my own little commentary, I, I translate what Hal said to Core about you know what is that training? What do you do? <laughs> Okay, you translate all the nonsense about flipping and bouncing on swords and all that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. Um, I guess some of that is part of our training. Discipline of the body is important um, for discovering who oneself is. Our masters focus on um, enlightenment and inner discovery. But there's multiple schools. As you can see, my school works on projecting a portion of ourselves outside of our body. And uh, I will not do it because I don't like hurting my friends, but you've seen. Yeah. We got to get you like a big giant bow for when you do that, because you could, you could carry like a, like a massive, like maybe like a ballista, like a giant crossbow or something. I'm just saying you, the arms are big. I thought that was his ancestors getting stuck. Oh, you think, I'll just kind of snicker for a second. Oh, God. Uh, I'll translate to Kor. He, you know how when he fights, he, uh, his ancestors uh, uh, manifest and are, are able to, to help him in battle. Um, he thought your arms were uh, maybe a, a larger ancestor of yours getting stuck on its way out of your body. Oh, uh, yes. The famous way of the stuck ancestor. I've heard of it. Kor uh, will chuckle. Um who knows? He may be right. I never met my parents, but I doubt that it's my ancestors. You'll you'll see a, a look of sympathy pass over uh, Beladin's face, 
as he uh, just kind of nods and then shares that uh, I was raised by a, uh, a tribe of Furbolgs. They left me, or my parents left me with the tribe when I was very young. I was sick, and uh, it, did a, it took a lot for them to keep me alive uh, as a baby. Yeah, I, I've never, never known my parents either, so I, I understand. If they are your aunt, from your ancestor, you definitely have some giant blood in you, which uh, is kind of ironic, given you were almost eaten by a cyclops. Something I must meditate over. Right. No, it, it is impressive, though. And then I'll, I'll translate what Kor said about not knowing his parents, but he imagines that they're they're not his ancestor. I knew my father and my mother for years. I mean, I told these guys I was the last of my tribe. We got ambushed, taken prisoner. I watched them kill my father, the king of our people. And I worked and toiled for them for years on end. The truth is, not all my ancestors were killed doing labor out in the field. Um, we gathered certain things over time and they always would take us out and mine some of these ice blocks or rocks. I don't remember really what they were and we kind of led a, I wouldn't guess what would be called a mutiny, but a resistance against them. And while most people were killed, the rest survived and fled to the northern sanctuary, fortress, foothold, whatever it might have been. And that's how I learned this foul language. And then I'll say something in Orcish and equivalently means something like I can never get this foul tongue out of my mouth or this foul language out of my mouth as long as I live part of me and then translate it back into common. I don't know what it would be like if I didn't knew, hadn't known. Just give him my condolences and I'll kind of get up at that point and kind of walk into the forest a little bit by himself. Yeah. Bill and all just kind of nod his head and uh, not say anything to you as you go and then turn and translate to Core, who I imagine is like watching Hal leave in a, a little bit of a confusion. And so I'll, I'll hurry to, to translate what he said. Yep, Core will nod cont cont contemplative. Yep. Um, but not say anything back. And Belladin, as uh, you relay that message from Hal and look look back once again to where he went to the forest, bears glimpse of stark white fur and gleaming eyes in the distance, kind of circling your guys' camp. Okay, so I won't I won't move, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look at Fenthwick and and say rather than bringing up. Uh, the nature of, of your lineage and if you have parents or not, uh, would you mind messaging Hal and letting him know that there's something circling us, circling us in the forest? Uh, white fur, and um, I just saw the eyes for a second. I'll cast message in the direction I think I, I saw Hal go. I assume I'm within 120 feet. I'll, I'll take out my hammer, you know, as he says that and put on my shield just in case and as I walk back towards the group. Where's this thing Belladin? Is it one of those elks? No, it's it wasn't it wasn't that color. It was white fur and it, it was moving around us. I, I'm not sure what it is. Um, how many ticks do I have on my on my staff? Well, looks like I have seven. So I'm going to knock off a speak with animals. <clears throat> And uh, for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to call out uh, to the creature and uh, say we are not, we're not simple prey to be attacked and taken down. I suggest you find others. And as you call out, you see emerging from the woods four gigantic white wolves. And they emerge kind of into plain view of all of you. I'll take up my staff and put on my shield and say, uh, we have no need to fight. I'm sure you can find bigger game than us. What languages do you speak? Um, celestial, common, druidic, sylvan, and undercommon. What language and, are you speaking right now? 
Oh, I'm speaking in beast form. Uh, you can comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. Their knowledge and awareness is limited by their intelligence. In Celestial, out loud, you hear, There is no need for such crude spells from you, human, if you can understand the language of the gods. I will speak. I'll switch to Celestial, which is this kind of like... Man, that'd be so interesting having it coming out of a, a, a giant white wolf. This like, like kind of sing song, like beautiful language. And I'll, I'll respond and say, uh, oh, "You must be a uh, a powerful and and possibly ancient being to to speak the language of the gods." You presume much, human. The clans of the forest been here since the beginning of time we are of the gods we are of the forest we had, we were here before your ancestors took their first steps and we will be here when your children take their last i translate into common and in common i say let's not piss off the ancient wolf gods of the forest and if you remember the Orochi was speaking celestial as well. Oh right, 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 right. Does uh, does it, does anyone want me to translate for them, or should I just continue treating with them? Corn will tilt his head a little bit, but you're more than welcome to talk. <laughs> oh, does Corn know how to speak celestial? No, he doesn't speak celestial at all. It's just I mean, if you're explaining fast and common, he probably only picked up half of it. Oh, I'll 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 also do an abridged version in Sylvan, so you're not lost. Wolf gods. <laughs> a strong gust of wind hits you guys from the back in the direction of the pool. And you see the wolf's eyes go wide. And they and you see them bow their heads. I will turn around. As you guys turn around, you see a gigantic red elk with massive antlers. Probably more points than you can count on each walking on the water towards you. I'll probably take a knee. Noticing the the deference that the wolf gods gave, I kind of motion towards the group of like, this this is this is important. Uh, act accordingly. I will follow suit. Whatever Belladin's doing, this is his forest. He's the druid guy. I think this is what you're supposed to do. And you see the kind of the forest spirits once again acting in that same manner as when the herd when you saw the herd in the distance. Oh, right, you did tell Hal that he saw like a flash of red. Cool. And you hear from behind you, it is not necessary for you to appear before these lowly humans. We the clan of Nobu will see that they do not harm and then you just feel a gust of wind hit you all and you have to like kind of close your eyes for a moment and the wolf just start you hear kind of a whimper from the wolf and they quiet if uh, Finthwick and Kor haven't kneeled yet, I would I would motion them to join Hal and I uh, on the ground because clearly this is this is a big deal. I'll do it, but I'll, but, I, but I will grumble about my knees. If Finthwick didn't grumble mm -hmm. about it, I would have been mm -hmm. concerned. Yeah, Kor copies you guys. And this gigantic red elk comes forward and stands a few feet off. Um, in. Uh, celestial, I will say I will thank the giant elk for allowing us to pass through this ancient forest and for sharing um, its bounty with us and for letting us travel in safety. And I'll motion towards the little forest spirits and say uh, they have been helpful. <clears throat> and uh, I know Kor has has loved their their presence. Is there anything that we can we can do for you uh, before we pass the rest of the way through the forest? This elk looks towards the forest spirits for a moment, and then looks back towards you, Belladin. And suddenly you feel a tiny little pressure on your ankles. And you look down and you see these forest spirits kind of pushing you towards the shore. Oh, I will. I'll use uh, my staff to <clears throat> get to my feet 
and um, kind of keep my head bowed and, and make my way towards the, the edge of the water. You make your way towards the edge of the water, and the elk is... It's standing on top of the water, kind of like a few feet out. Like, it's still shallow, but you'd have to get in the water to get close to them. Uh, I will ask it to wait ten minutes while I cast Water Walk. I'm just kidding. I will uh, wade into the, the water to get as close as it seems like it wants me to get to it. Yeah, and it would be about, like, your calf level, so. Okay. And as you stand before this massive, gigantic elk, you see kind of the majesty of it. It is as perfect as a creature you have ever seen. Quick, quick question for scale. Um, I think I'm about, yeah, I'm, I'm around six foot even. Like where, as I'm standing there, like to the top of my head, where, where do I come up on the elk as it's standing? Probably like not even at its like chest level. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Okay. Whew. As you get closer, it kind of leans down its, its neck and stretches it out towards you as it starts to smell you. First, your forehead, your chest, your arms, and it smells each of your hands. And then after that, after it smells your hands, it lifts its head and blows out. And you feel yourself getting knocked back for this gust of wind onto the shore. You are prone on the shore. You don't take any damage, but you've been blown back. And then it looks again towards the forest spirits. Someone roll me a d4. I mean, I, I guess I can do it. Yeah. Fentwick, you are being pushed forward towards this gigantic elk. Oh, uh, should I... I don't know if I can tell if it wants me to get up and move back to the rest of the group or if I should stay prone on the shore. Kind of makes no more notice of you, Bellator. Okay, alright. I will I will get up and kind of bow my head a couple times and make my way back towards the group and rejoin them. So, is the wind pushing me or am I being... No, you're kind of being, like, ushered. Trying, They're trying to, like, usher you forward. I suppose I'll... Stand up and uh, let them usher me forward. The elk actually takes a few steps forward, but the same process. And as soon as it's you get near and he starts to smell, and as soon as you get forward, he starts to smell towards the hand where you're, you're holding the staff, and you're immediately blown back onto the shore. You take no damage. Was it something I said? I'll kind of shrug. As, as you rejoin us. And roll me a D. Someone roll me a D2. As he looks again towards the forest spirits. Yes, sir. I keep minimizing the side window so I can look at this beautiful map. How? You are being ushered forward. All right. I'll go forward. This time it takes a few steps back to where it was originally. You go into the water as it gets close to you and starts to sniff. And after a moment, you feel a gust of wind as it breathes out on you. The air is sweet, but for you, Hal, cold. Familiar cold. For a moment, once again, you f feel like you're back on the tundra. I'll close my eyes and I'll breathe it in real deep, considering we were going through four breeze that were, you know, mere three feet apart, and I'll just take it in. And as you close your eyes, in that moment, you feel you're back on that wide open frozen landscape wrapping around you, ironically like Warm Embrace. And you open your eyes, and you see this gigantic elk bow its head slightly, and then put down and drink, and look up at you expectantly. Set aside my shield and hammer, like, just put it aside, and, you know, palms up, I'll move to the cup some water in my hand, take a sip while keeping an eye on the creature, and then cup some more water, and then hold it up for them to perhaps drink from my hands. Okay, you, you take a drink and you lift your hands up and suddenly you feel yourself falling back as your eyes go dark and you all hear a splash as Hal has fallen on his back. Is his head is his head above the water line? Yeah, he, he's above the water. It's shallow enough where he's above the water where he fell okay. back. All right, then I won't immediately jump up and drag him on shore. Seemingly unconscious. Hal, in that, in that moment, you feel yourself fall back momentarily. Go dark for a moment, and you try to remember your head shakes, and you hear your mother calling you, and you go out and continue on the task that she'd asked you of going out to gather from the scarce kind of vegetation around your village. And the scene shifts, and you close your eyes once more, and you open them again, 
and you're out on a hunt with your father, probably some of your cousins. You guys are hunting a great, a great white bear that had been seen around your village. You hear your father's voice telling you to steady your nerves, to calm yourself, take a deep breath. And you do, and you close your eyes once, and you open them once more, and you find yourself shackled in a cage, foul smell all around you, the huddled masses of your kin surrounding you. You feel a, a rough kick into your stomach as you hear a rough orcish voice. What is it that you said to me, you filthy maggot? And you close your eyes and wince in pain and feel the rage building inside of you. And in that darkness, you hear a voice. Halianthar, the Northern Watchman, you have faced many trials, gained much strength, but do you have what the resolve needed to be my champion? Do you have the strength of will? What must be done? Save your tribe. Save the world. I think I'll kind of tie those two together with the rage building within me and then my head will flexibly go back and then I'll scream with rage. I do! And you scream out that primal rage. I do! And you open your eyes and you find yourself in an unfamiliar icy tundra. The torrent of waves in a storm. And you hear a voice, a familiar voice, your uncle. It must be done! They bear the mark! Only their blood can seal the foul creature once more! And you see a huddled form. You're not able to make out their face in the shadows. High above you. So give me a perception check first. Okay. I was just about to flip a coin. You're not out able to you're not able to make out a person's face. But you, you do notice two things. A strange tattoo on their neck in the shape of a dragon. And the second thing you notice is the skin that tattoo is on. Well, being as how my uncle was the shaman and everybody trusts him 100%, I'll, I'll do what he asks me to do. Go ahead and make an attack roll, please. I, I will attack recklessly. At 15 hits, this person is wearing no armor, has no defenses, and your warhammer swings down and you hear the sickening crunch of bone snapping and why, how, why? As you see tears mixed with blood pooling, face of Marisol, the Blue Nightingale, looking back at you, pouring out from her crushed chest over the altar. And you hear a voice, and your eyes open, and, and you f find yourself on your back in a pool of shallow water on the shore of the pond in the Sentinel Forest. In the moment you all, you all look to see how fall back, you look up once more, and the elk is gone. I'll slowly get up and hang my head in shame, but still stand straight. Collect my things and look about the clearing or this area and see if there's any more wolves or elk or whatever. Uh, there are The elk is gone. The wolves remain for a moment as they look towards all of you and you have been given leave and blessings of the lord of this forest. We have watched you since you've entered to make sure you do no harm, to have leave. And they kind of back off and then turn and rush off into the darkness as the sun has now set. I'll, I'll like give a, a like a bow from my waist as they leave and then translate to the rest of the group after they go. Did they say anything about these druids we follow? How far are they? Did I have time to ask them before as they noticed them leaving? You could have if you wanted to. Yeah, in Celestial, as I, as I noticed them uh, leaving instead of uh, escorting us, um, I'll say, uh, we've been traveling in the forest for a while. Uh, do you know how far uh, away our prey are that seek to do harm here? You hear growl. The Dark Ones. Those who betrayed their oaths. We track them, but our mother forbade us from attacking or she sensed something dark within them. The one you've been speaking with kind of looks towards the spirits with their guidance. You should reach the gate of the grove shortly after morning. Know that no harm will come to you in the forest where the Lord still holds sway. They kind of give you an, a slight nod, which is more than what you got when they first approached, and then they run off. I'll translate for the group. Let them know that we should rest and be ready in the morning where we'll get to the gate of the uh, where we need to be 
Kor will sit down and try to begin to trance them. I'll go back to putting up the hut. Alright, Fentuk resumes his ritual casting. Anything else you guys like to do? Talk about the night is yours. No, I think Hal's going to be pretty quiet. Yeah. If, if Hal looks up, I imagine he's going to see the eyes of the rest of the group on him. Like, so you, you're going to... You gonna you gonna talk about it or? I think you see Hal going through his belongings, looking for something, not frantically, but you know, one by one, pulls out his you know has his black cloak on, and then he has this gem he's looking through, and then he has this perfume that was given to him by Pebbles, and he uh, sprays it in the air and smells it, and pulls out this chalice, this copper chalice with filigree in it, and an embroidered hanky with a bee on it, and kind of just. Thinking of all the little trinkets and knickknacks he's collected in his time down here, south of where he's from, and then just thinks about uh, the Blue Nightingale and at the edge of the forest, wondering whether they should go in or not. Pulls out the tapestry and kind of lays it on the ground and tries to get an understanding of what this tapestry is or represents and doesn't say much to the group and chatter to die down or whatever, and then he'll collect all his belongings and roll up the tapestry and put it back in the bag of holding and roll over. Water breathing, ritual, and then um, going to uh, take off his winged boots and get his feet in the soil, his bare feet, and it's he's like connecting with the earth and that's how he's going to change, uh, do like a ritual to change his spells before he goes to sleep. And uh, that's pretty much all Belladin does. All right, are you guys setting any watches or? Yeah, can we get the the forest spirits to do it for us? Yeah, the forest spirits, the giant elk, the giant wolves. Like, I don't know. It feels like pretty, pretty safe, but it might might be a good idea. I mean, there's Archie. You know, he can wait till he can wait till Cor gets up. Archie will wake Fentwick up. Not gonna make you guys roll because there is no need. You guys are safe in this section of the Sentinel Forest along this small pool. Core after about four hours of meditation, you get your long rest. Early morning, you know, one or two in the morning. What would you, is there anything you'd like to do while the rest of the group rests? I mean, Core will probably uh, take a take a quick look around just to see. I mean, he knows he's safe, but he still wants to know what's around him. You see some of the forest spirits kind of running around still. You see some of them on the grounds or on the rocks or on the branches imitating the sleeping poses of your companions around you. And you look around and you see once again around five or six of the four spirits in front of you, cross-legged as well, their hands on their knees, imitating you in your meditation. Uh, Cor will chuckle and uh, decide to do his morning ritual a little early just to give the four spirits a little something to be entertained by until companions wake up and as dawn breaks you all wake up and you get your long rest to the sight of once again Kor leading his his group of uh students in morning calisthenics dawn of a new day anything you guys would like to do in the morning eat whatever leftover roots and berries we have left and just check in with everyone see how everybody's doing if they're ready uh if, if we need to discuss anything like what the plan is like do we do we have a plan for because we we remembered you said there was like 25 of of his acolytes of of uh the lesser druids were with them right like that's a fairly large number of enemies that we may have to face yeah there's around two dozen or so yeah so i will i will mention that to the group and say so how hopefully we don't have to fight them all at once but if we do what's the plan i look at uh core and look back, Belladin and Fenthwick, and I mean, you guys can do severe damage from a distance. I mean, I say we I mean, tell Kor that him and I just rushing in there. You guys do what you need to do, but we get closest to the... We take out the albino one first. Yeah, it would seem to make sense to focus on the, on the biggest danger. With the charm that I got for summon their creatures, is that something that I need to concentrate on um, when I use it? Is that, does that take my concentration? Because usually conjure woodland beings or conjure minor elementals or something like that does take concentration. So yes, it allows it, it. The charm just allows you to cast it through just using the charm. So 
Okay, cool. Good to know. Thank you. No worries. Well, we're talking about charms. Is the heroism first level? Uh, it's just it's just a potion. It acts like a potion of heroism. Got it. Okay, so it would be just one person. Got it. Yep. And and I will I will mention the charm to the group uh, since we're talking about tactics, and say, uh, you know, I can with this charm that that the tree uh, bestowed, I can bring us some friends to help out, and then and then I like. Uh, realize that I'd forgotten something, and I, I pull out the golden leaf and I ask uh, Fenthwick if it's if it's magical. Yeah, I can I can spend some time identifying it. Yeah, I imagine this is happening while we're eating breakfast, so we, we probably have a little bit of time. Fenthwick, you lay out your necessary components to ritually cast identify, and it's a leaf of vitality. This will be a custom item. Oh, it's a one-time use. Regen full health. Holy shit! So it's not like a benefit of a, it's not like a long rest. You don't get your spell slots or anything, but it right. will. Re- you can, it can regen you to full health. Takes an action to use. I'm looking through all my stuff. You guys make your morning preparations, and once you're ready to go, the four spirits await you, to lead you further into the Sentinel Forest and to this what the wolves called the Gate of the Grove. Are there any? Evidence of passage. Make a survival check. If I see him looking at the ground, we've been traveling enough together. Oh, if, yeah. If she allows it, I guess. Yeah. Do you want me to also roll, or do do I just help Hal? And, and you guys can choose. What would you like, my friend? You can roll. I can imagine we're if we can, we're still walking side by side, and I'm kind of looking. So I imagine you start looking on your side too. You guys look around. And are you are you looking for just any signs of a passage? Yeah, or uh, I mean, based on what we're looking for. So you know, a large group of of druids, similar to what I saw when when we first got out of the pool, uh, beginning after we jumped off that cliff. You said I sat, found like very old signs, five days old signs of of, of uh, a large group of people moving. Uh, I would look for something similar. Yeah, you guys look around, and other than your recent tracks of movement around. You don't see any sun, any tracks at all. And with an 18 after, I would say if you guys do this in kind of the beginning of the morning. Oh, I also ha- keep forgetting. Mm-hmm. But if I am tracking my favored enemy in my favored terrain, I get advantage on the roll. So let me roll again. I, I just keep forgetting that I rolled worse. <laughs> so I'll say this with an 18, Beladin. You guys kind of start this process in the morning, and it takes you about an hour or so to kind of get ready in the morning, right? After everything identifies your morning routine, you notice that your own tracks from the early in the morning oh. are starting to disappear as the vegetation kind of regrows back to its original state. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. So I will, I will uh, mention that to everyone around us, um, to the group, and, and say you know, based on. If, if this is the heart of the forest and the magic is strongest here, um, it is, uh, it's, the growth is so vibrant and so quick that, uh, our own passage is, is being, being removed as we walk. I guess we just follow the spirits. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't let us wrong. Let's do it. And once again, your kind of leapfrog escorts make their way through the forest and now you see small, a small stream that was kind of feeding this pool of water. And as you guys travel further in, you see more streams meandering in the distance and around you. Go over some, follow a path of one, kind of go over it, continue on. Until the trees start to part and you hear the rushing of water. And ahead of you, you see stone. Kind of a large, almost mountainous area. In the middle of this forest and the vegetation clears and you see water rushing down ahead of you and falling into a waterfall an apparent chasm in front of you you continue forward you the forest spirits stop at the edge of this chasm and you see this small stone path of boulders held up by these intertwining roots and vines over this chasm and this river below it. And you see a waterfall ahead of you coming down off this mountainous region 
off this like small rocky mountain outcropping to and there's a small uh, little island on the other side of the path uh, please correct me if i've misunderstood the uh description but we're gonna have to go over the water to get to the island or or is that all we see here or is there like a didn't okay Hal remembered the the story pretty well from the uh the the tribe that helped us in the in the plains and the hills but wasn't there a part where someone jumped or was that was that only the cliff was that jump there there is kind of a, a bridge made of boulders being held up by these vines and roots impressive okay cool but you can see that like it's not a, a it's not a single stone bridge at, at the centermost point there's just literally stones being held to go- together large stones being held together uh, is this a gate? Is this where these little guys drop us off? Or So, the forest spirits have stopped at the edge of this chasm. Mm-hmm. I guess this is the gate. Uh, does it look safe? I don't know. I mean, it's probably safer than an ice bridge between two chasms. I mean, a natural formed ice bridge. Is, I'm not sure if this is naturally formed. I mean, what's the worst that can happen when we fall in the water? If you want to take 10 minutes, I can make sure that if we fall in the water, it won't be a a big problem. I think that's probably good. While the rest of the group discusses our next plan of action, I do a little spore dance for 10 minutes. Quartz making his teary eye goodbyes with his little friends that apparently will not be following us. They're kind of mimicking Kor's movements and like going like around and like throwing their arms up and giving themselves hugs and like... So after 10 minutes of Belladin's dance, which some of them have now gone... You have your own little entourage, Belladin, of peop- of uh, these four spirits who copy you when you do your ritual dances. You all get wa- uh, water walking. Is there uh, anything moving in the island? Uh, give me a perception check. No, 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 no. 19. Other than the w- movement of water, you don't see any movement. Coast looks clear. Wow. Well, this is what we came for. Belladin, do we just do we just walk? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll motion forward and say, uh, be careful. But with what I did, if you fall in the water, um, you'll be able to stand on its surface. So you guys make your way across the bridge. Yeah, we're just waiting for the trap to be spun. I'm also like holding the charm. In in uh, I've got a shield equipped in, in one hand. And then I've got the charm like hanging around my neck on a necklace with uh, my other stuff. And um, I'm just ready at the first sign of combat to, to conjure animals with the charm. You guys cross the bridge and make your way. Got my shield and obviously Warhammer's out. Just might be nothing, but it might be nothing, but it might be something. And as you guys make your way closer, you see now this large rock kind of outcropping island at the tip of this uh, this landmass and a large stone kind of monument doesn't seem like it was carved it seems natural with fence like you would recognize the symbol of Gian carved into this rock what looks almost like kind of like a representation of a sunflower with a single flower head and then sunbeams around it and it's been a while so I'll show you guys once again the symbol of the Holy Hexad. So on the upper right corner, that is the symbol of Gian. And surrounding this uh, rocky monument, you see four s- animal skulls. I'm not too good with nature, but do they look similar to any of the animal skulls that uh, or in the same size or shape of any of the animals we've seen thus far? The size is right. If you want to give me a nature check to see if you recognize what animals they are. Well, there it is. Nice. There is a skull of a bear, an owl, a fox, and a wolf. I will point those out. The size is right for normal animals, or the size is right for godlike animals that we just walked past? Kind of godlike animals. Oh, jeez. I will motion uh, Fenthwick, uh, unless he's looking at something in particular to like move back with me, because I don't know where the enemies may be coming from. I haven't seen a gate, but maybe this is a gate. Oh, Fenthwick, does it is it radiating magic? That's not my area of expertise. Well, let me 
see what I can do here. I'll do a ritual detect magic check for casting. So once again, you guys take a moment as Fenswick lays out his ritual casting. And after about ten minutes, you do get a sense of magic. Enchantment coming off of each of the skulls. And then enchantment and abjuration coming from the waterfall behind them. Oh. Uh, I'll report that. Al, as you get closer to the monument, you see scrawled on the bottom some kind of writing in a le- in a language you don't understand. Uh, I'll look back towards Belladin. There's some writing here. I have no idea what this says, but you've been talking to everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. In, in Celestial, it says, Those who prove themselves to contain the essence of nature. Oh, interesting. Do I get the... Well, okay, it's on the altar here. I guess I will try and suffuse like my halo of spores onto the onto the altar to see if it like is like a e- evidence enough or if I need to do something more. So are you using an ability or what are you doing? So yeah, so I'm I'm like pushing my spores onto the altar and normally this would uh would be like a constitution saving throw or they'll take damage, but I'm just trying to uh like the same way I was using my symbiotic entity onto the tree in a helpful way. And this way I'm just kind of like using it as a proof of, of, uh, of my druidic nature. Will the spores are surrounding you and suffusing your body to go and cover this altar. Nothing happens. I look at how and I go, all right, well, I got one more, uh, attempt and then, and then I'm just going to have to cast a spell. So hopefully this works. I use fungal infestation on the altar and on the the different skulls around the thing. Like I, I know that's not what this is used for, but I, I'm trying to use that as like proof. Normally, it turns smaller humanoid creatures that die within ten feet of me into a zombie, but in this way, I'm trying to interact with the offerings here. Which one? Okay, so they're bear, wolf, owl, and fox. Fenthwick's got the owl. We never saw a fox or a bear, but we did see the wolf. I guess I'll do it to the wolf. The wolf's skull glows for a moment, and then nothing. I feel like Belladin would have more knowledge about this sort of thing than Jordan does. Can I roll an insight as Belladin to to try and discern what it wants me to do here? This would be that would be more of an investigation check. Okay, deduction of. Yeah, that's more investigation. Oh, back below 10. That's a 9. You're not really sure. I turn around like a Fenthwick. So, the nothing happened when I tried to interact with the altar, which you said had magic. But the wolf had glowed for a bit. Do you have any ideas? I don't know. What is the essence of nature? That's... Rather a philosophical question. Uh, investigation check, Fenthwick. Belladin's like, should I just cut my palm open and bleed on all these skulls, or...? That's, that'll do it. Holy crap. You get the sense that this is a trial to show your essence that would match each of these beasts. Oh, interesting. So, with a 25, I'm just gonna... I'll let you guys know. You have to display the essence of each beast. So this will be a skill challenge. Strength for the bear, cunning for the fox, wisdom for the owl, and dexterity for the wolf. You guys can just you guys can just roll if you want, but if you come up with a creative kind of description of what you're doing, I'll pro- I'll add that I'll probably lower the dis- the DC. So strength, bear, dex, wolf, owl is wisdom, and then fox is cunning intelligence intelligence okay so Hal will go over to the bear you know put away his hammer slide it in its loop at his belt put the shield sergeant bartholomew's shield on his back and he'll he'll grab his totem that's bookended by these charms that uh he killed that is on the from the tundra it could be that bear that was that they were that he saw in his vision and he'll walk over to the bear skull and put his hand like right in his forehead you'll see his mu- muscles tense up and i'm gonna do much like i did before i'm gonna rage but i'm not gonna scream out like i normally do 
I'm going to try to channel that energy into this bear. And so he'll channel the strength of his ancestors through himself into the bear. Makes it glow forever or for longer. Okay. Um, give me a perception check as you reach out to this skull. As you reach out and kind of touch this and you expect it to to shift slightly being a skull. It doesn't budge. It's you get a sense this thing is extremely heavy. So you're raging and trying to do the ancestral protectors? Channel their strength into into this bear skull. Give me a strength check, please. As in athletics? Just a straight strength check. I will use luck on one of those. 11 is the best I got. You feel the ancestral protectors and the rage flowing through you. The skull does not glow. Who's up next? Cor is looking at Baladin and waiting for him to point at one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, I have it translated. That's my bad. And I'm like cursing in Sylvan. So each of the skulls represent a different part of nature. And um, the wolf one is going to be about uh, speed and movement. And then I just kind of like raise my eyebrows at you. So you need to uh, interact with the wolf skull in such a way to prove how dexterous you are. That's what Fentwick said. I imagine your uh, 7-Eleven dance would probably do it. Yeah, Cor will take a deep breath and start the, the dance of the, the four spirits. So you stand in front of the, the wolf skull. Give me a dexterity check, please. Not great. Uh, 15. You see... Core, take a deep breath, close his eyes, and perform one of the katas or forms that he does in the morning. And you see the the punches and the kicks and the jumps and the, and the spin kicks. And he does it forms almost this kind of beautiful deadly dance in front of the wolf skull. And at the end, you finish core, sweat on your brow, take a deep breath, and you feel your muscles relax, and the wolf skull glows. You hear like a little golf clap behind you from Beladin. Of course, Miles and gives him a thumbs up. All right, who's next? I'll have to use the, the fox skull. Not totally certain how to go about showing cunning, but since that's sort of like deceit in a way, uh, I'll make a minor illusion and create a duplicate of the skull next to itself. Give me an intelligence check. Just straight intelligence. Mm -hmm. You see Fenswick walk up to this skull and study it for a moment. And at first, you produce the illusion of the skull itself. And then you look at it for a moment longer, and you study its proportions, and you make the illusion turn into a living fox head. Well, I guess that's me now. You know, you think I'd be the best at showing nature, but this, this is just not something... I don't know. Uh, I will go to the owl and... Before you do anything, I'll touch you and just say, go with God. Go with Gian. Thank and you. Cast guidance on you. Oh crap! Thank <laughs> you. That is extremely helpful. Wow. Uh, I will. Since the owl is about, you know, this like nighttime predator or whatever. Uh, I say or whatever, but um, I'd like to use. This might turn it into a two-part thing, and if I fail either of them, it sucks. So I don't know if this is a good idea. I was going to say that I would scrounge up living edible things and place it before the owl to show of like you know scavenging and and, and uh, getting a bounty the same way you know a, a creature would. So like using my survival to do something like that. Give me a wisdom check. Please. Well, no need to even roll a d4 there. Unfortunately. Your mind gets distracted thinking about your journey here and your research, thinking about the discovery of what you found at the Elven Ruins and what that might mean. And unfortunately, the skull does not glow. And after a moment, the other two begin to fade as well. Coming from the top of this waterfall, you see a gargantuan wolf appear, walking over to the edge. Greetings, humans. I am Nobu. Leader of the Wolf Clan. They say in Celestial. Um, I will translate for the group and then respond in Celestial. I, am I the only one that speaks Celestial in the group? I think so. Oh, 
Uh, Kor goes back to bow mode because he doesn't understand what's happening, so he's just going to bow until somebody tells him something else. Uh, he, uh, Baladin's like, wait, I don't think... I don't know, I'll find out. And then I'll switch to Celestial and say, uh... The trial of the gate offers but one chance. However, one of you appears to be a chosen of our goddess. And as such, I have been instructed grant you entry into her sacred grove. I translate that to the group. And then I look at Hal and give him a thumbs up. I, I look back up at the wolf and I say, uh, okay, noble Nobu, what's the downside? Because if we just did it on our own, like there feels like we, I don't know, we failed here. So what does that mean? You are wise for a human, little one. I was instructed to grant you entry. There was no instructions of whether I could not provide my own test. For you to enter the sacred grove of our goddess, to root out the vile darkness and corruption that has entered, I must be assured of your strength. As soon as he says strength, I in Sylvan say trial by combat, and then I switch to combat, uh, combat and I say trial by combat. And then I just, like, kind of tense up a little bit, and I say, I think I think we can prove to be equal in that test, at least. We shall see, human. We shall see. And she howls. The four wolves that you had seen earlier appear on the ridge as well. And we're going to roll some initiative. All right, let's begin this combat. Top of the round, Hal. You're up. These wolves are probably... I want to say, like, 80 feet up right now? Going, I'm probably just going to uh, don my shield as an action, and then as an object interaction, pull out my warhammer. Benswick, you're up. Sorry, I will cast Blur on myself. You hear a muttering of an incantation behind you as you guys turn around for a moment, and Fenswick's form is blurred in a flurry of movement. All right. Sorry, guys. I've lost sight of the map, but Kor will step forward a little bit just to be ahead of his people. He will draw out his bow and he will uh, shoot the one on the far right, if possible. I don't know if this will still go through. Yep. 26. And you're aiming for this one, right? The yeah, far right or bottom for us. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 26 hits. All right. Hitting the far right with your bow and arrow. Yep. For 11 damage. Two top? 14 misses. 14 misses. I will... I can bonus action patient defense, correct? That's something... If you use a key to... point, yes, you can. Yes. Yes, that's what I will do. Belladin, you're up. Oh, it's my turn already. All right, holy crap. Uh, how how deep is this water that's surrounding this altar? Uh, it's pretty shallow. I mean, you all have water walking anyway. Right. Let's say five feet, ten feet. Shallow would probably be five feet or less. Yeah, five feet. No, I won't summon two giant octopuses. Even though it's well within my rights. Um, well, I said I would summon with my first turn. I feel weird uh, summoning dire wolves against wolves. <laughs> it just it seems wrong, right? Doesn't it seem wrong? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it feels wrong, too. Aren't they like fey creatures, though? Like, not real creatures? Yeah, they're fey spirits, yeah. You know what? It's mean, but uh, I summoned two dire wolves. It was that or the giant octopi, so. Um, I should add them to the turn tracker, or do you want them to just go after me? They'll just go after you to make it simple. Okay. All right. Um, and I tell them to, to move with my melee companions and fight with them uh, alongside them so they'll move up next to uh their pack now and uh then i will personally move away from the giant wolf so i'm south of fenthwick and with my bonus action uh, i shillelagh my staff in case i need to slap somebody with it it is now the wolf clan's turn they will Run down the edge of the cliff. Oh, I did not see the two on the top. Oh, no. 
Oh god, I should have zoomed out. I didn't see the ones to the north. That's their action, though, to dash. Nobu doesn't do anything. She's just watching. Mm -hmm. I would like to rage, and I will move to the one next to you, and I will attempt to attack it with my warhammer. Go for it. Recklessly. 24 for 14. 24 hits. I'm going to move it five feet over here. Yeah, five feet. Or you want to go diagonal that way. Yep. Nice. I'll step in between them and Belladin and take my second attack. That is a 23 for 15. 23 hits. I'll move over there and use my rod and cast Cone of Cold. So that requires a constitution saving throw. Two fours. Amazing. So they take 28. And you said you used your staff for that? Yes. Actually, sorry. Make, give me a wisdom saving throw first. Roll me a d100. So you see this blast of cold swirl out in a whirlwind and envelop these two wolves. And as the, the spell subsides, you see illusory butterflies and flower petals flutter in the air around Fenswick. Oh, that's cute. This, this, this guy is friendly? If it has the concentrating tag, then yeah. Okay, um, and that will be my turn. All right, Core will go ahead and uh, bonus action summon his astral arms. Uh, the direwolf to the south is your friend. Yes, I'm only looking at the one to by east, I guess. Okay, can you choose the creatures, or is that every creature? It can. It's somebody. It looks like it's it's each creature of your choice that you can see within ten feet. Okay, perfect. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, if you can make a DC 16 deck save. Oh, damn. Why? Why? Stupid. It made it anyway. Yep. And uh, it doesn't say anything about half damage, so I'm assuming it doesn't take any damage. Yeah, if it doesn't say, then. All right. Well, I'm just going to punch it twice then. Stupid thing. Um, 25 hits. And, oh, I should have said it first. Whatever. And hiya again. <laughs> and on the second one, I'd like the setting strike. Con save. AC 16. Golly. Okay. It's an 18. Okay. All right. Um, that score is third. You forgot to do it on the first one. <laughs> can't you can't you punch with a bonus action or? I used my bonus action to do that. So. I wish we had another token with arms coming out of the head or whatever. Well, my. Frosty brother from the north definitely helped me out there. I'm going to cast... I'm going to need a save from the two wolves at the top. So that's a constitution saving throw, DC 17. Ooh. So it's a failure. That that wolf is blind. Meet, meets the DC. So that one's not blind. That's interesting. You hit that one, so it's got ancestral protectors on it, right? Correct. Okay. So I want to have disadvantage hitting me anyway, so I don't... 30. I get right next to Core, and I'm like, and Sylvan, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Oh, that's a good point. Um, while I do that, I uh, I click my boots, and I am now, they are, they're large, right? So that means they probably have a reach of 15 feet. So when I got to this point, I would get uh, 20 feet up in the air, and that would that'd be all my movement. Because I have 35, so I went 15 and then 20. Sounds good. And now it's my wolves. It is your wolves' turn. Oh, he's a big one. I'm going to attack the one next to uh, Hal. So it's an 18 to hit. 18 hits. For 9 damage, and then I need a DC 13 strength save. That's an 11. That's a prone wolf. And now my other friend will attack the wolf next to Core. Natural 19 for uh, 13 damage. 24 to hit, and a DC 13 strength save. That's a 15. Okay, cool. Um, this wolf is actually... Hmm, this wolf is going to move away from uh, the dire wolf and uh, uh, incur an attack of opportunity. Yeah, he's going to do it. Because it just beat him. Oh, it's terrible. Ooh, miss. Look at that damage. Glad I missed. Uh, <laughs> um, and move in front of Fentwick kind of sensing maybe incorrectly a, a weaker companion because of how small Fenthwick is not realizing just the pure magical 
I think I think he thinks Fenswick is a snack, and he's just going to eat him. I look at the wolf, and I say, no. Don't do it. Be cool, bro. Don't embarrass me. And that's my that's me and my wolves' turns. Yeah, I, I can jump on the back of the wolf and just ride away, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how we survive this. I, I can use him as a mount. Mm-hmm. I don't see why not. I mean, any of us technically could. He's large. First one moves up. He would not have pack tactics yet because he's going going first. So it's disadvantage, right, Fenswick? From blur. Yeah, that's a nineteen to hit. His AC is twenty. Okay. 21, I think. Second attack. Second one moves up. It is blinded, but it has pack tackets, so it's just going to make a normal roll. Um, did it move out of my wolf's attack range by getting to the south there? Uh, yeah. Would have. I'm going to use an attack of opportunity. And he's within five feet of my companion, so I get advantage. Yep. It's a natural 17, 22 to hit for 13 damage with a DC 13 strength save. That's a prone wolf. Did it use more than half of its movement to get there? So let's see. Yep. Okay. Then it would um, not be able to get up. It could probably attack me, uh, my dire wolf, instead of Fenthwick, but it's blind, so it would be disadvantage, wouldn't it? I think it can use the remaining movement to get up. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. But it, it can't go any further. Um, so it's going to attack the dire wolf. Okay. Um, regular roll. It's blinded, but it's pack tactics. Yep. Got a low AC, too, so should be easy. Oh, one under. Oh, no. All right, second attack. Wow, I'm rolling great tonight. Two under. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He just, he's blind, man. It sucks. All right. Gonna go and attack you, Hal. Uh, did you reckless attack or no? Yes. He did. Um, All right. He he's still prone, by the way, so he needs oh, to get up. He'll get up. Yeah, it's not like he's going anywhere. So. Yep, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen to hit. Nineteen's my AC. For thirteen piercing. All right. And then a DC fifteen strength save. Twenty-two. Second attack. Oh, sorry, that should have been an advantage. Do one more. Twenty to hit. Thirteen damage. Roll the same damage. I did the same thing earlier. So, 13 dam- thirteen piercing, and then another strength save, please. This last one, I'm going to move away from you. Insulted. Fully insulted. Yeah, I guess I should, I should probably punch him. Ooh. Wow. It was almost on an 18. It hit the yeah, wall and rolled back so far. Right <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, 12 misses. So, it's going to go and attack you, Fenswick. So... Pack tactics are normal roll. 18. Jesus. Second attack. Even worse. Fantastic. Why Why weren't those at advantage? Because he has blur on. Oh, he does. Oh, my goodness. So, so smart. He's in the middle of a wolf party. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Nobu is just going to watch. I'm going to hit this wolf right here recklessly. 21 for 14 and natural 20. Natural 20. Let's go. For 19. And I'm going to move him back five feet to here. Uh, He's, yeah, right there. So he, every, every attack has advantage until my turn. Okay. On on this wolf at the bottom. So the friendly wolves move on Belladin's turn? Yes. Right right after. Okay. Uh, Then I will hold a thunder step. Until the friendly wolf moves away from me, which he he better do in the next round. <laughs> how how big is the shockwave from you? Ten feet. Ooh, yeah. So he'll have to incur at least one attack of opportunity. Okay. Well, well the one to the right of him is blind. Oh, yeah, just one. You're you're so smart. Thank you. I totally so he forgot shows, about that. So he should be able to just swing around the other one. Good call. Yep. Uh, Belladin will tell that wolf to do that on my turn. So, Fenswick, you are holding, you you start to cast a spell, and right before it hits its peak, you hold the magical energy in, and you're concentrating. Oh, wait a second, I have to concentrate, don't I, to do that? Oh, sorry, the wolf's going to take one for the team, then, because I don't want to lose concentration on Blur. Okay. Oh, bummer. Okay, yep, it's good. Con save from everybody! <laughs> mm. 
let's go top to bottom. What's your DC? Uh, 16. 16, so that's a failure from him. Yep, took full damage. It's a failure from him. Awesome, everybody failed. Everybody did. <laughs> <laughs> Including our wolf? Yep. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that hurt. That was like half of his life. <laughs> He's not as strong as these celestial wolves. So what he gets for mistaking me for being weak. Hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> Frickin' Richard made that up. So he said you were a snack. He's a snack. With a thunderous ro- burst of energy, you see Fenthwick. <clears throat> the shockwave emanates out, and you see all the wolves whimper as the concussive force hits their body, and Fenthwick appears safely out of danger person that looks most in danger right now because my my druid buddy's flying, correct? Yep, I'm up in the air, Hal's uh, toe-to-toe with the one to the south and then there's three around the other wolf to the north. One of them is blind, so if you're looking for a target that you can hit pretty easily. Oh, by the way, he would have gotten a con save Oh, at the end of his turn. I'm so yeah. sorry we forgot that. That's alright, it hasn't made a bunch of difference. 22. Well, now he's now he's it would have happened at the end of his turn, so yeah, no longer blind. Yeah, I don't care too much about your pup, and I think Hal's the most in danger out of my friends. Um, I mean, the the pup's expendable. <laughs> Let's be real. You have advantage on your attacks. Uh, everybody or just everybody until how Hal, until Hal's turn. Nice. Okay, I will. He hit him with a critical, that. and that makes them uh, weak too. Yep, Crusher. Wow. 15 still hits. Oh, no, sorry. Six, 15 misses. Just misses. That hurts. That hurts my heart. You lied to me. I'm going to try again. Punch number two. That hits. 26 hits. Suggest inspiration on that last roll, but then I remembered you don't use it, so. No. <laughs> Refuse. So, I apologize for insulting you. <laughs> and then I will, uh, yeah, I'll use a key point to flurry of blows and punch two more times. 24 hits. 22 hits. Whew. And that will end my turn. Beladin. Uh, I tell the wolf to the north to just do as much damage as he can. And then the one to himself to the south, I tell him to uh, to guard Hal. I move 20 feet to the west. Yeah. Yeah, so he's going to um, like basically block, uh, try and block the, the wolves from getting you from the north, surrounding you if he can. So he's not going to attack. No, he is. He is. I, I meant more he's going to move in such a way to try and block the enemy from getting you, but he's going to attack first, and then he's going to move. All right. Uh, they do that on their turn. I just... Okay. I am within 10 feet, so before I moved, that one I'm going to do Halo Spores using my reaction, so it needs a con save. I'll click it. So it's a DC 17 constitution saving throw from the one to the north. 21. No damage. Nicely done. Um, and then I get here. Jeez, a lot of my stuff is either concentration or... Yeah, not, not, there is no or. It's just it's concentration. Okay. It's that druid life. I know. I know. All right, I'm going to target this one to the south. Try and burn it down. That's a natural six for 17. Oh, nice. Uh, seven uh, necrotic damage to the, the wolf to the south. Um, oh, I got advantage. Let's see if I get a natural 20. Or is it only melee hits? No, it's all attacks. Yeah, it's all attacks. Sorry about that. Uh, not, nope, yep. So that's 7 for the first one. Unfortunately, damn, look at that, 15. Um, so yeah, 7 points in necrotic damage. And then the the, the viney seeping uh, hand is, is like around the, the fur and head of the wolf. So it can't heal on this turn. Um, and then my wolves take their action. Uh, to the one to the north um, is just gonna... They're all like equally injured. He's gonna attack the one to the east. He's gonna get murdered here in a second. This one? Yep. Oh, natural 18. Very nice. 10 points of piercing damage and I need a DC 13 strength save. Well done. You're still up. Uh, but yep, he took a bite out of crime. Uh, and that is his turn. And the one to the south is going to attack the southern one at advantage. 19 and a 1. So that's 11, another strength save. Well done. Well done. And then, incurring an attack of opportunity, he's going to move to the north like that. And 
basically make it so that way only one wolf will be able to get, or one or two wolves can get on the left there, but no one will be able to attack him on the right. Although he has resistance, right? To uh, this one's damage, yeah. Yeah, so, well, I mean, he's resistant just to damage in general. Oh, but he's going to incur, hold on. Yeah, he's going to uh, incur an attack for sure. But do I want to block core or do I want to block... Oh, I told him to block Al, so he's just going to do that. Yep, block Al. Yep, block Al. So, yep. 11. 11 misses, thankfully. Okay. Um, And yeah, he's just going to stand there to the north of Hal and, and try and defend him as much as he can in that way. Um, and yes, unfortunately, dire wolves only get one attack. Because he's not celestial. Uh, no, I would have moved probably to there. How? 23 to hit for 15 piercing? Oh, sorry, I rolled that for me. <laughs> it's like a, he doesn't need to roll his own saving throw. That's for you. As as he moved away, I would have actually liked to have taken an opportunity attack. I apologize, I didn't mention it before. Yeah, with the other wolf, go for it. Thank you, sir. 14 misses. That's a 16 strength save. Alright, you're good. Second attack. Oh, they, they stacked up. 18 misses. Look at that damage. All right, core. Let him rip. Yeah, that'll hit. That's a natural 20. Oh, shit. For 22 points of damage. All right. And I need a strength saving throw, please. Yeah. You're good. Second attack. Can I see core? Uh, yeah. I mean, there are large wolves, but I mean, it's a battlefield, so it's not obstructed. Uh, so reduce that damage by seven. No, nullified the crit. Yep. Well done, man. Cool. So yeah, take back seven points hit points as you are bitten again for a twenty-four to hit. Yeah. yeah. For Nineteen piercing. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts a lot. I think you need another strength saving throw. Yes. Eighteen's good. Oh, not enjoying himself currently. <laughs> yeah, that looked like it hurt. Probably would have moved further, further. down. Yeah. Yep. Further down. All right, two more. Let's go. <laughs> yep. What about my dire wolf? What the, what the hell? Apparently, they also do not care about your dire wolf. <laughs> that sucks. They had, these these are a little more intelligent wolves than your average dire wolf. So twenty two to hit. That hits. Or twenty two piercing. Jesus, you're rolling rocks on damage. <laughs> Hey, I've been rolling. I rolled like so many fives at the beginning of this. Ooh, you are knocked prone he, as well. He had advantage anyway. <laughs> he might as well kill me on the ground. All right, let's see what you got. See if I'm more if I'm more harder to hit on the floor. I am harder to hit on the floor. That misses. Nineteen. The nineteen misses. <laughs> All right. Amazing. That's really funny. This one is going to move. Yeah, so it would have moved out of your melee range. You have disadvantage because you're prone, right? That's, that's an interesting thing, though. It didn't move out of range of his astral arms, but it did move out of range of his regular arms. Yeah, that's a, that's a question. Do I still get the punch? Him? So, so does he take it now, or does he wait till he moves out of range of the astral arms? It'd be your melee range. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I'm gonna say yes for now until we can move it up. Until I can look it up more, but I'm I like the idea of that. So yeah. You can try to... With my regular hand, huh? Okay. Let's see what happens here. Um, disadvantage? Oh, where are you? No! Why do those 18s hate me? Inspiration! No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> if he was going to use it, he should have used it on the prone. Alright, so he is going to attack you, Hal. For 14 piercing and a strength save. 26. Yeah. I don't even know why I have you roll these. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 21 to hit for 11 piercing. Man, Core, you guys just got... Ter I just rolled great damage on you. I'm sorry. Yeah, you rolled rocks, dude. 6-6-5 six, six, on that last one. So another strength save for me, please, Hal. That's a 19. Hal, you're up. Uh, I'm going to use second wind. Hey. Nice. Nice. Uh, then I'm going to attack this badly injured guy. Go for it. Reckless attack. Because they have advantage anyways. 26 for 15. <laughs> We've almost got one. I want to move him right here. So he's within 5 feet of the other guy too. Uh, second attack. 
Oh, it was almost an 18. That misses, unfortunately. I'm going to use luck and roll one more time. It's the first number. Yeah, that hits. 24 for 16. It's not looking good. Uh, I'm going to accent surge. The, the blood coming from these wolves is glowing. Accent surge. For 27 for 14. You feel the... V- like a surge of energy is like, no more and swing your hammer poof, catches him in the chin. You see the, this glowing white blood fly across and land in the water collapses for a moment. And you see him start to stand and the wounds start to heal. And you see him run over, run up the cliff wall. They're celestial. So <laughs> you can't kill him. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't want you to waste the impact of your reaction. I understand. Yeah, I'll uh, attack this one here next to it's another twenty-seven for ten Damn, damage. Son. You need to get some. You need to get some levels in champion. Yeah, it's, I got one more to go, and then it was either advantage <laughs> on initiative or champion. Oh, champion! And, and 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 it's advantage on initiative. Plus, you can't be surprised. And I know Richard. That's nice. That's nice. Save okay. us, Fentwick. Forget about me. Just fireball us all. Don't listen to the... Did, did, did someone to say the, fireball? Don't listen to the monk on ground. No, he's speaking in Sylvan. Mm. Don't listen to him. He's saying okay. stupid stuff. It's okay, I, I speak Sylvan. He's going to save for, like with evasion. So <laughs> yeah, he'll be fine. Um, I will conjure up a small ball of lightning and chuck it at the uh, wolf to, to the north of uh, Kor. Let's see. Let's see if this might hit... Come on. Uh, 15, unfortunately, mi- just misses. The sun was in my eyes. Does Fintwick have inspiration? Does not. I do not. Bummer. As the, ar- the arc of lightning goes wide and you see it <laughs> blast into the stone behind the sizzle of ozone. Thank God it didn't hit the water. It would have killed Kor. <laughs> yeah, there's no duck save for that. <laughs> yep, everybody in the water would have gotten electricity damage. I'm going to do that when I DM. Be like, oh, you lose electricity. You're standing in water. Oh, no. Kor, you are prone. Okay. Kor is going to stand up. Kor is going to punch the one below him. Oh, my God. Disengage, brother. Disengage. There's no disengage in Kor's world. 18 hits. Max damage. Uh, stunning, stunning strike. Yes. Yes. Just stun them all. Just go up the line and stun every single one of them. That's a 22. Rolling so high against me. Okay. <laughs> Running it back. Try again. Why Why always roll off of the fort? It hates me. Okay. Uh, bonus active flurry of blows. Got to use another key point for that. Holy. I'm almost out. <laughs> um, hit this guy again. That is a 16. It's max damage. Very nice. Nice. Stunning strike. <laughs> you should be that player that makes him roll at disadvantage. Oh, not that you need to. He failed. 11. All right. So Amazing. That's, that's one of them. And I have one more attack. <laughs> so I will, attack, I will attack the guy above me. Yes. 27 hits for seven damage. Stunning strike. <laughs> stunning strike. Oh. Also stunning. <laughs> get the f- get out of there. Get out of there, homie. This this is the safest place for me. Nobody else can come and bite me. <laughs> oh. This guy can. Maybe maybe take hey, take a step to one to the right and then he won't be able to reach you. I guess I'll I'll run this way a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully they can't reach me any or dude, dude doesn't run around and try to kill me. I'll end my turn. That's pretty clutch, I'm not gonna lie. That's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so as Belladin passes over the top of this wolf, uh another Halo of Spores. Let me click it. Ooh, max damage too. DC seventeen con save. Ooh, six points of necrotic damage. I come in at an angle, if that's alright. Ten feet down. Uh, so that way I can touch the top of Kor's head. Eyes closed, waiting for the fireball. Yeah, especially because you said fireball me, bro. <laughs> 13 points of healing to Kor. 
Nice. And that is my action and my reaction. Yep, it's wolves time. Yep. Wolves to meet you. Let's go. This one's going to take some attacks. Are they stunned? How are they looking, actually? Yeah, everyone's around the same, it looks like. So I'll just, yeah, I'll do the one right there. Uh, and unfortunately, that was all of my movement to get to this position. So I can't get back up in the air, which means I am now within biting distance. I know uh, Rick's excited. Uh, Richard. I think Rick is excited, too. He wants me to take some damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please. Take some of this damage, please. Oh, that's a natural 20 on the one to the south for 13 points of damage. And I do believe he automatically fails a strength save as he is stunned, so he is now prone. We get more advantage against him, huh? Multiple advantage, yep. And then the one to the north of Hal is going to attack the one to the west. 13 misses, yep. And then he's going to stand his ground to protect Hal. And luckily, Hal is not within five feet of one of its allies. So, but oh, he attacked recklessly, so it doesn't matter. And uh, that's its turn. Yep. Well, the one that can do anything is going to do something. It's a twenty-five to hit for seventeen. Rolling rocks again. Make that strength save, please. Just ignoring my Fey buddies. It is fitting that the only person who damaged my homies was Fenthwick. Uh, gonna be a. 21. 21. All right. I'm just hoping to get a natural one on one of these. That's all I'm, I'm hoping for. You'd have to get two. 23 to hit for 16. And that's its turn. What did you roll on that? Was that a 6 or a 9? Okay, a 9. I was like, if you got a 6 and you still got a 10, like that's amazing. <laughs> a 16. So pretty much you have to roll 7. Uh, 7 or below, yeah. Great. <laughs> it's only a 1 in 3 chance. The other two are stunned. That's their turn. Attack this one at the top. Rec- uh, yeah, I'm going to do it recklessly. Oh, my wow. God. There you go. 19. Jeez. We always wonder where our natural 20s are. They're, they're with they're with Rick. Yep. It's so a 19 damage. Uh, I'm going to move him five feet to the north. And then I'm going to move down here next to this guy. Okay. Smart. Actually, I'm going to go in between. And I will hit the guy at the bottom for 13 damage. Uh, I think that's everything. This guy at the top can any attack has advantage on him. That's what you're at. Okay, I have a muttered incantation and a skeletal hand will appear in front of the one on the bottom. What's that? For you, you cast fireball right here? <laughs> yeah, fireball, right. Just just a heads up, the, the wolf at the very top, anybody has advantage against that guy. Everybody has advantage on anything right now. Because they're stunned, and then they're... That's that's totally true. Sorry, I forgot about that. Everybody's... Why, why, well, yeah, but this one, I have advantage on him, too, so... Everyone's got... It's advantage city over here. On core, too. Core's prone, but yeah. 22 hits. 10 points of damage. Nice. Core has... <laughs> one more. <laughs> one more key point. Um, Core's gonna punch the one... To the south, hopefully. Take it out. You still have advantage. Yeah, boy. Nice. Nine damage. He's going to try again. Oh, should have rolled that at advantage. So with all these fours, man. Second one misses, unfortunately. Oh, if only you had like an inspiration or something that you could use. <laughs> why does why do the deity gods try to force me to do this? No. Yeah. I wish I had an inspiration. I'm gonna bonus action. I'm gonna bonus action punch this thing again. And it better kill him this time. You stupid dice gods. Oh, nice. An 18 and a 19. You went to the other side of the scale. It's looking real bad, but it's still up. <laughs> no. Oh, golly. Oh, you know what? I guess. Do I do it? It's not really, not really in Core's nature. Should he run? That's up to you. I mean, it. A retreat of some sort is in order based on your health. But, I mean, that's up to you, man. It's your, it's your character, right? What would your character do? My character would not leave Hal there. Uh, compared to you, Hal looks beachy. <laughs> I've literally got more health than you have maximum. Literally. I know the meta, how stupid this is. I do. Hey, I respect it. I respect it. Look. Not going to get you a level or anything. It's going to give me another inspiration, huh? 
All right, they are no longer stunned. Nope. Not looking too great, but they are no longer stunned. So luckily, the one to the south of me, or to the west of me, is prone. So if it's laying on the ground, could I go up and not incur an attack of opportunity? Or would it have disadvantage? I'm going to say it has disadvantage. The reach doesn't really change from the square. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to go up 10 feet and see what happens. Come on, dice gods. Wah, wah, wah. That's so funny. Interesting. I give the wolf my inspiration. No, I'm just <laughs> Wow. Who's, whose team are you on? Should I heal you now, considering what you just did? You'd have to go back down, right? Okay, I would have healed him before going up if I'm going to heal him. Core fully doesn't deserve it. I mean, Core deserves it. I don't know if you deserve it. It, it's true. That's true. Core's been a good guy. He's here trying to protect his new allies. Whereas Jay's over here like, I'm going to give the enemy my inspiration day. You know what? For that core, you can take a second inspiration. Oh, don't do not do that. I found a loophole for unlimited rerolls on my part. I just give core inspiration, then he just gives them to me. You know what? I'm not going to heal core. Do you think? Oh, God. Um... I'm going to I'm going to attack the one to the south. Since it's near death, I'm going to try, try and take it off the battlefield. Natural 19 for 10 points of damage. You see kind of the color drain from its face momentarily as the, the wounds glow brightly for a moment. It runs off to join. Attack of opportunity. Yeah, I take an attack of opportunity as it runs back. Um, I'm within 10 feet of the dire wolf that's on the ground, so it needs to make a constitution saving throw. Are you 20 feet up? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Oh, I, uh, I know, I keep I keep taking my hand off the piece. Yeah, I'll keep it in case it, uh, I'll get right here. Actually, 20 feet up. Yeah, I just moved back next to it, and now I'm within range. Because it's, it's 10 foot reach. So, so... I can get directly over it if you want. Six points of necrotic damage. And then I get right behind core, and I, I go, I'll heal you next turn if you're still alive. All right. Now it's wolves time. Mm -hmm. The one to the south. Misses, unfortunately. Uh, the one to the west is going to move down, incur an attack of opportunity. He sees this, this, this wolf on the ground near death, and it's just like bloodlust. It's 21 to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. Or 14 and a strength save. Saves, does not go prone, but takes the damage. There we go. And is going to attack this one to the east for 13 damage. Nice. Strength save. Just kidding. Double, double prone. Then it moves there. And the one on top. Could I have moved him? Would that be all right? I, he's still going to stay within melee of the one. Yeah, that's fine. To protect my peeps. He attack, he protect, he attack, but most importantly, he eat snack. Yep. Oh no, I left Fentwick alone over there. Whoops. The scent of core is too appetizing for him to run that way. Yeah, just come to the, all the blood in the water. Can he make it? That's why I moved him there. I did the math. Which means <laughs> Fentwick is tasty. Oh jeez. Oh my god. He just ate him. <laughs> it ran him over. Disadvantage, right? Uh, yep. It's Vange for multiple reasons, but... Oh, blur. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, and luckily he's our highest AC party member. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. This one's gonna get up. Stand up. And just attack you, Hal. 26 for 17. Ow. 21 for 18. And two strength saves for me, please. Um, let me get a strength save on the top. That's going to be a 17. And you said 18 damage. I'm going to use Ancestral Protectors. Spirit Shield to reduce that by... Oh, damn. Oh, I take nothing. and But I still need a strength save. Well, you you take seven, right? Because I reduce it and then I reduce... Uh, resistance and then I reduce it. Oh, right. It's nine. And then you reduce the... Okay. Wow. Yeah, the resistance goes first. Amazing. <sighs> 18 on the strength save. Uh, just the, the the insurmountable howl over here. Just unable to be pushed over. Nobu comes down and swallows howl. Yep. 
this point, Nobu releases a howl, and the other two wolves run up. You are interesting for humans. So I'll say that. I keep saying, not not human. For mortals. <laughs> my apologies. Gets a lump term, and, you know, we've had HR meetings. We're working on it. We're, we're, we're receiving sensitivity training. We've had seminars. There was a video. You have proven your strength, and I will grant you access to our sacred grove. However, you have me interested you so wish you can test your might against me if not we will continue on our way in an hour now human i look down at hal and cole where i'm like it's up to you guys huh <sighs> oh jesus i don't translate that so no one knows that he's although we all see that he's like bloody from his nose and his mouth and the water underneath him is just pooling with his blood and uh and he's like ah so it's a group it's a group vote majority wins typically you let the alpha live so he can continue his flock or his herd or his pack i say we take it easy on them and let them go Odin's like oh well, i mean uh, an ancient wolf god wants to test his metal against us i imagine if we succeed uh, we would get some type of boon she oh i apologize i didn't i can't see from here so i my bad uh i imagine there'd be some type of boon if we won um but it's yeah it's up to you guys so what's the boon if we die i, I don't we can I, sleep for a long time yeah we get to rest i mean you are no longer troubled by the conflicts of this plane of existence. We know Kor wants to fight, but I guess between Fenthwick. So even if I yeah, it'd be it'd be it'd be a stalemate anyway. So damn, I guess that means I get two more volts, huh? Ar Archie votes no too. Shit. Very well, mortals. I would have liked to see your prowess in battle for myself up close. But I will take you into the grove. And she jumps down. How high was that waterfall? Uh like eighty feet. God damn. And she gi she gives a, she gives a roar and the waterfall parts and glows for a moment. And you see an opening. How long does conjure animals last? An hour. Do you think we'll have time to rest in there or do you think they'll be right inside the the gate? Our vision of the grove has been clouded since the dark ones gain their entry. Right. We do not know what you will face. Alright, well, thanks for the, uh, sparring. May the goddess watch over you, mortals. I hope to one day see you return, and may we meet again in friendly combat. Oh, yeah, that would actually be really cool. Maybe we're, if we come back through this way? That would please me. Alright, very nice. How long does the gate stay open for? She kind of cocks her head until you walk through. Okay. I don't want to be... Okay. You know what? I You probably have things to do. And then Belladin and the wolves walk into the gate. Uh, Bell I, I, I've been trying to make it obvious, but Belladin... Like, I imagine he's heard of these creatures, especially from his tribe of, like, ancient beings from, from before the time of, uh, you know, during the creation of the world and everything like that. So he's kind of, like, uh, like shocked. He's, like, uh, I don't know, a little giddy being able to, to interact with these beings. So he's, yeah, he's not exactly... The, the, this wolf clan is, like, the sires of all the wolves in the world. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's kind of starstruck. You know what I mean? So he's trying to talk to them as long as possible before they, before leaving. But hey, we we have stuff to do. You are musing for mortal. All right, good to meet you. Good to meet you. And the Fey wolves go through the gate, and then Belladin goes through the gate. And you all step through the gate, entering the sacred grove of Jian, having proven your strength to the great wolf clan. <laughs>